afternoon, everyone. Nice to see everyone. So today we will be making a vegan risotto with butternut squash. So this recipe is uh, vegan and gluten free. Um, so rice is a really uh, good option for gluten free. Um, those who are following a gluten-free diet or their celiac, and it's actually known that um, rice is the least known to cause a food allergy. So for this recipe, we'll need a couple of ingredients. So first we'll need butternut squash. I already pre-cut them and put it in the oven, but you'll need about three cups of butternut squash. And then for the rice, we'll need about a cup and a half of rice. Need one cup of spinach. One small sweet onion chopped up. We'll need minced garlic. Excuse me, are you gonna be giving us the recipe um, in an email or anything later? Or do we yeah, need to write it in? Yeah, sent out. Did you Perfect, not receive it? I can send it to you later. Thank you. Well, we didn't get it. We, we didn't get it. And then we'll need uh, five cups of broth. For this recipe, I chose to use vegetable broth only because I'm vegetarian, but you can use chicken broth or beef broth. Uh, depends on your preference. And then we'll need the olive oil for sauteing the onion and the garlic and to drizzle upon the butternut squash. So yeah, so we already have butternut squash cooking. So for that, you wanna preheat your oven to 425 degrees Fahrenheit. And in a large bowl, you wanna put in your chopped butternut squash and the olive oil. And for the butternut squash, you'll need two tablespoons of olive oil. And then you can sprinkle it with a little bit of salt. And then, so we have that cooking. And then for this recipe, it is very important to use this type of rice. It's called arborio rice. And it's better to use this rice than plain white rice or brown rice because this rice has a very high starch content. So when you cook it, it becomes more creamy and like more firm and it's a better texture for risotto. Because if you were to use regular rice, rice, like white or brown, it wouldn't come out as good. So, so Holly's going to make the saute the onion and then the uh, minced the, the garlic. So, yeah. I apologize. We don't have our other camera today. So, so first you want to heat your broth because you don't want to use uh, cold broth. And when you heat your broth, you want to do it over medium heat. And you want the broth to be warm but not boiling. And then you can set that aside. And, and to make the risotto, you add the tablespoon of olive oil into a pot. And you, you put in the chopped onions and you saute that for about two minutes. And then you add in the garlic and you saute that for about a minute more. So we have Holly doing that right now. And then she'll come with the pot to show you um, the pot. Has anyone here made risotto? What kind of risotto did you make? I've made risotto over the years. Sometimes I put peas in it. Sometimes I put in uh, yeah, all risotto's kinds of things. Risotto very uh, versatile. So you could use all different types of vegetables. They could use cauliflower. And I use uh, I use lemon juice too. Lemon juice? Yeah, you could do lemon juice. Um, sometimes you could use some white wine. That gives it more of a flavor. Oh yeah, profile. white wine always. Always yeah. white wine. I use broth in mine instead of wine because wine gives me a headache. So I use a good uh, bone broth. You know why? 
you're getting a headache because of the sulfites. I have a suggestion. I don't drink wine, but I cook with it. Mm -hmm. And yeah. so I don't care about it. So I don't get headaches from it. I guess it cooks with the sulfides, but it's cooked off or something. But anyway, uh, there's a new product called ULO, U L L O, that uh -huh. takes the sulfite out of the wine. Yeah. Oh, interesting. So they sell it at uh, William Sonoma. It's, it's, so, it's quite expensive, but uh, you, you have to, it comes with a beaker and you, you pour the wine into this thing. It's like a filter and it goes into the beaker and it doesn't have the sulfites anymore. Good to know. Thank you. Good to know if you're a wine drinker. Yeah. That's good to know. I, who, want, who needs those sulfites? So here we have our sauteed onion. And now we're going to add in the garlic. And then we're going to saute that for about a minute more before we add in our cup and a half of rice. And like I said, uh, risotto is very versatile. So you can add yeah, different vegetables. You can add cheese. You can add butter. So for this recipe, I'm making it completely vegan. So you can add egg. egg, and you can also add, add meat, like chopped up sausage or sautéed beef. Yeah, yeah, you can do that. But chicken might allow. Yeah, you could add meat into it. Um, so I'm probably using nutritional yeast. So I'm not sure oh, if any I lost it. What is that yeast? Yep, so it's a vegan substitute for a uh, Parmesan cheese. It's just a lot more health, and it's a lot more healthier than Parmesan cheese because it contains a lot of B vitamins. And who, well, who's the product maker? The product, I got this from Trader Joe's. Oh, it's so a Trader Joe's yeast. Okay. Oh, yep. that red bob or whatever it is, the, and then, they make it too. And over here we have Polly. So she minced the, uh, she sauteed the garlic and now we're gonna add the full cup and a half of rice. Gonna stir it up. So now, it is very important. We're going to add half a cup of broth at a time. Um, yeah, so this is the measuring spoon that measures half a cup. So add that in. And yeah, the broth is already warmed up. And this part's really important because we only have to use half a cup at a time and stirring consistently because of the high starch content. And we can't, can't add in all the broth at once because since it's so high in starch, it'll absorb all the rice. Uh, the broth will, yeah, so the rice will absorb all the broth and it'll become very like mushy. So you have to do a half a cup at a time and stirring consistently. So that's what we have Polly doing now. And then let me check on the butternut squash because it'll have to roast for about 25 to 30 minutes. And I'll probably give that another two minutes. And you want to, uh, if you're using butternut squash for your recipe, you want to See, once it starts getting like a golden brown, that's when you know that it's ready. Uh, Pauline, I have a question. Yes. Sorry, it's hard to hear. Butternut that. squash, butternut, fresh butternut squash is very difficult for those of us that are a little bit on the older side to cut through. They're pretty tough things. Can we use like acorn squash? I why because I find it easier to cut. Yeah, you can definitely do that. And actually, a lot of grocery stores have the butternut squash already pre-cut right um so that makes it easier Up over here we have our nice um i found that you can actually bake the squash part way and then you can cut it easier 
Well, they have it all cubed too. Yeah, but it costs more. So we just bake it part way, then I cut it and then chop it up from there. Yeah, so yeah. Yeah, because I know chopping it is like a whole process and even this looks pretty firm. Um, so if you can, I would recommend buying it um, chopped just to make it easier on you on yourself. Um, but, but yeah, you could also use sweet potato. A lot of, I feel like root vegetables would work really well with the risotto to help bring out some flavors. And then let's take a look at some nutrition facts with butternut squash. So first is that it's good for your eyes and skin. And one of the health benefits of butternut squash is to, the ability to keep both eyes and skin healthy. This is because it is very high in vitamin A. Vitamin A, and, or carrots. Yeah. Yeah, but it, yeah, so yeah, you'll also find it in like carrots too. So it contains the substances, um, carotenoids and retinoids. And our bodies transfer carotene to retinol, which is a type of vitamin A. And that's vitamin A is required to maintaining a healthy and glowing skin and good eyesight. And secondly, it prevents constipation. And that's because it has both soluble fiber and insoluble fiber. So insoluble fiber um, bulks up your school and then uh, helps um, it go through your digestive tract while uh, soluble fiber helps it form like a gel. And that gel is good because if you have like high cholesterol, that gel helps bind to the cholesterol and it gets rid of it um, within your school. So, so, fruit, so, so, you're, what, so you're saying that anything like the squash, the carrots, and things like that, high in vitamin A, and also high in fiber, are good for cholesterol. Because so yeah. many people have this high cholesterol, and they're yeah. taking pills for it. But they should eat a, a, a yellow red vegetable every day. It might help their cholesterol. Yeah, so anything with soluble fiber. So soluble fiber is like oats, like anything that soaks up water. So yeah, like oats, um, rice, like the rice that we're making, it's good both insoluble and soluble fiber. So that's really good, yeah, for preventing constipation. And then let's see. So also um, it helps butternut squash is good for strong bones. And butternut squash contains 17% of the daily magnes dosage, helping the body maintain a strong bone structure. And this helps absorb calcium and Im improves the mineral mass of the sp spinal cord. And it also, the like orange vegetables, like carrots and butternut squash and sweet potatoes contain vitamin C, which helps with collagen production. And let's see, it also contains other essential minerals. Uh, such as iron, zinc, folate, um, which is good against preventing osteoporosis. So that's another good benefit of consuming butternut squash. And it helps support a healthy immune system. Uh, and this is because of that vitamin C, which acts like as an antioxidant and the uh, beta carotene. So those are good in um, illnesses like cancer, premature aging, and heart disease uh, because the antioxidants help neutralize free radicals in your body. So the free radicals are anything like when our body metabolizes, like the aging process or like exercising. So it's just consequences of metabolism. So uh, the vitamin C helps stabilize. And let's see. And then since it is high in the antioxidants, it helps, like I said, neutralizing the free radicals. So that also helps prevent inflammation and other chronic diseases. And so one cup of butternut squash contains 39% of the daily requirement of vitamin C for women and 32% for men. So that's 
very high. And let's see. Check in with Holly. How are you doing, Holly? So one of the things we learned here today is that if you have one of these red, yellow vegetables, how many of those should you eat a week then? Yeah. So for the red, yellow vegetables, you want to vegetables at least five servings of your, of your daily meal. So it's good to get not just red vegetables. just put it right over there. Thank you. Over. Yeah, so it's good to get all different types of colors of vegetables within your diet because they all contain different phytonutrients, which are substances in plants. Um, so all of them are beneficial. Uh, so like different colors have different health benefits. So there's certain colors that help prevent like lung, like okay. help your lungs stay healthy. Okay. Um, so very important, yeah, to have um, priority in your diet with, when it comes to reason. And then let's see. And then. Bye-bye now. Um, Take care. Bye-bye. Right, <laughs> and then so it also is high in potassium and magnesium, but which is good for cardiovascular health. Um, because it contains, yeah, the potassium and that ensures uh, proper blood flow and reduces strain on the heart. So, yeah, and then it, they say um, also when it has a lot of folate too. So when you're like pregnant or something and um, you need folate, it's a good source of it. That's not going to help us. <laughs> Yeah, I just thought I might. Well, the only one of us is going to get pregnant any day soon. <laughs> yeah, so, so that, yeah, so a lot of health benefits regarding the uh, um, butternut squash. You want to add in anything, Holly? She's our registered dietitian. So, so this is, you guys, I don't see much. It's getting kind of creamy. You can see, I can feel the rice is, is softer. I'm going to add another half a cup of uh, liquid. Good. And it looks like our butternut squash is ready, so I'll take that out. And this is how it looks like roasted. So you, as you can see, they, it has like some browning. So that's when you know that it's done. And we'll just put the that. Three cups. So at the very end, we're gonna mix it in with the rosa, uh, risotto. And then we're gonna also add in our spinach which the recipe called for it not being cooked, so we're gonna add it in raw. Does anyone have anything to add or anything? How long will you uh, combine yeah. all the ingredients and uh, put them quality. together at the end? Okay. So I've never made risotto before. Had it before, but um, the one challenge and the reason probably I've never made it before is I feel like you have to stay at the stove the entire time. So um, I think your stand it requires you to really stand at the stove for about 20 minutes. You can't leave it like you would normally make rice. Um, did you talk about how much the rice costs? So the, this particular rice um is about twice the cost of regular rice 
But, you know, if you didn't want to make risotto, you could make, um, I would take brown rice because brown rice is healthier for you. But you can do these same ingredients and make regular rice. It's just not going to be creamy like risotto. So the advantage of risotto is that you can have a creamy feel in your mouth and taste without using the fat and having real cream. And I think that's the that's really the benefit of risotto. But if you wanted to, you could just add all these ingredients to just regular rice and um, have a nice meal as well. So. And you know what, Holly? Yes. You know what? Most people wouldn't know the difference. You might know oh, the difference. Oh, no, I think so. Risotto is a completely yeah. different, what we call and it, a food I know, but if you, called mouthfeel. But if you, but if you yeah. serve that to somebody and said, this is risotto, they'd accept it. They well, say, technically, oh, it doesn't technically have it's really, yeah, technically you would refer to it as a pilaf instead of a risotto. Risotto is a is always made with this arborio rice. I mean, it's going to taste great, but it's always made with this Italian, um, this actually came from Spain, but it's associated with Italy, this particular rice. So, um, but yeah, you're right. I mean, most people don't know a pilaf from a risotto, um, but technically it would be a pilaf. Right. What did you call that again? Pilaf. P-I-L-A-F. Okay. So and pilaf is um, just rice that's yeah. um, usually, uh, instead of water, you um, use a liquid that could be a combination of wine or any kind of stock. You know, if you want to be vegan, you can do vegetable stock. Again, as Paulina said, you can use a beef stock. Um, it's, so it's always a rice that's cooked in a, some kind of flavored uh, liquid. And mm -hmm. it's not this particular rice, so it's just... Um, long grain rice, brown rice, regular rice. And then you always, uh, pilaf is, um, means that there's some kind of vegetable, sometimes nuts in it. Um, you can put dry, you know, actually dry cranberries would be delicious in this. You could take this recipe and add dried cranberries and um, I would add them at the end. Uh, that would be delicious. You Why do you nuts. add everything at the end? Wouldn't it be tasty for some of the ingredients to be in it earlier? Well, I think that the spinach, actually, when we add this, because the risotto is so hot, the spinach is going to cook instantly, especially this is baby spinach. So um, if you cook this, if you cook, yeah, you can add this. If you cook the there, spinach. Certain ingredients. It, um, for the whole 20 minutes of boiling it, I think you, first of all, all the, the healthy uh, vitamins and all, don't do well, especially vitamin C doesn't do well with the heat, so you're better off putting it in the end. Um, but things like onions, which went in in the beginning, yes, that's something that's going to add flavor. Um, I might add chopped parsley. What? I think that's background noise. I would add some of my herbs. So, um, I would add, so you're right, if, if I was going to add carrots, maybe I would add carrots. Okay. But um, so the answer to your question is it depends on what the vegetable is. But again, you have to think that this is being cooked at a very high heat for at least 20 minutes. So um, some vegetables wouldn't do well for that period. Oh, that you say, Holly, did you ever make rice with beer? I wonder if you use rice. I ever made rice with beer. No, is it good? No, I said Guinness beer. No, I've never made rice with Guinness beer. I cook a lot with Guinness beer because I like the flavor of it, but I've never done that. I wonder what it would be like. Yeah. Next, next time I make rice, I'll put some aside and put some Guinness Maybe beer. Maybe a couple tablespoons of Guinness. You could do that. Guinness, you know, it like. you know, if you did, I always feel like if you wanted something to taste like beef, but you don't eat beef, I kind of think the Guinness gives you that kind of flavor. It's a very bitter, but very rich flavor to it. Um, oh, yeah. So there's some background noise. Uh, yeah, I don't know who's got the background noise. Yeah. Okay, here we go. Yeah. And I already added the spinach in there too. So I'm just going to add in the butternut squash and I added some of the nutritional aid. And as you can see, like when I was mixing it around some of the um, the spinach cup because of the liquid. And then we can add in the butternut squash and then we'll mix it around and then it'll be ready. 
you can also top it off with uh, certain herbs like um, rosemary or thyme. Yeah. Tell us how it is. I didn't see you put any. I didn't see you put any salt in that. I'm sorry. What was that? I just did. I did. I miss the salt. Oh, that's from the chicken soup. I guess that you get the salt. Yeah, and then I there's no the salt or pepper. What? Yeah, yeah, parsley. Yeah, salt. So you could pepper it. I love spinach. Tina, I put butter and salt and pepper and cheese. I put all, I throw all kinds of things in it. I'm sorry, what was that? Sorry, it's so hard to hear over the noise. I, I would probably personally for myself or my uh, anybody else. Yeah. I didn't demo going on. They're cooking um kind of cheese. Butternut yeah. squash yeah. risotto. Yes. I'm gonna make it tomorrow. Tomorrow? Yeah, Butternut I'm squash gonna risotto. Yeah, I'm going to make it with my eight photos. Yeah, send us photos. Really? Oh. Yeah. yeah, and like I said, mm. you can add or take away certain ingredients if you want to add like a different vegetable, if you want to add meat to it. Yeah. What's, what's I wonder why, you I wonder why your picture keeps stuff. going in and out. Hello. 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 What's all that noise in the background? Well, I, I don't know. Because the other people were having a private conversation. conversation. Some people were, they're not participants. So. Any questions? Or? No. All right, well, I hope everyone's going. Yes. Bye bye. Bye bye. Remember the date? Um, so next month in November, me and Holly are baking. Uh, we're doing low sugar baking, and we're doing a blueberry lemon cake. And Holly's a really good baker. So. Sounds good. So we all hope that you join us for that. It's always Thank good. It's, it's always healthy. Next month, next month. So we're gonna cook without sugar. Could you, could you say that again, Holly? It's hard to hear you. You cannot. Uh, let's use Don't know what you said. You got it. Okay. You got it. Sign in sheets. Maybe we should make them sign in sheets. So when Does anyone have any more questions before I add? Just take them and put them in the computer. No, I just wanted to thank you for doing something that was gluten free because most of them oh, don't apply Yeah, food. of course. Yeah, we hope you try it. Yeah. It came out really good. We'll so. I can make a quick one. Okay. Yeah. You and Holly were terrific. You are the Hollywood stars. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you. Uh, yeah. <laughs> you, are, you are <laughs> <laughs> well, thank you, everyone, for joining yeah. us. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you very much. Take care. Bye bye. 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 Thank Bye. you, Pauline and Holly. Are you doing that? Good to see you.